So last week it was two degrees and this morning it's six degrees. That's super cold. It is a snowy day here on the island. So we're at the beach, it's post storm. We have some flurries going on here. I am actually heading out to a part of the beach that doesn't get a lot of foot traffic normally. So on a day like today, there's probably nobody out here but us. So what I love about this YouTube channel and what I love about keeping in contact with you guys is there are people all along the East Coast that have been keeping in contact with me and they've been reporting back to me, especially in regards to this last storm system that came through. So I have Adriana from Georgia who's reported back. She has found a ton of stuff after the storm. We have Kim in New Jersey who sent me all of these photos of all these awesome finds that she found. And I have Lynn in Brooklyn, New York, who goes to Rockaway Beach, who sent me all of these amazing photos. So we're actually heading out to the beach right now. It's right around the corner, and I am hoping that we get some pretty big scores ourselves. So let's go see what we can find. Check out that ocean. Let's get closer, let's get down there. So we are down here, there's baby moon snails that are frozen to the ground. There are some really big surf clams over here that are getting covered with snow and frozen. So that is a winter struggle that um, is shells freezing to the ground. Sometimes you find something beautiful and you go to pull it up and bam, it breaks. So here are more moon snails. They're huge, but they're frozen and they're underground. This is such a huge bummer. They're all frozen to the ground. There's another one over here. Oh, you guys look at these. And these are huge. Let me see if I can grab this one for you. I didn't put my gloves on, I'm freezing. Yeah, see, we can't even get these out. There's no way these rocks are moving and they're completely frozen, but they're huge. You can't get these out. They're completely frozen and these rocks will not move. Oh, I got one. Look at that. Look at the size of that. So big storms mean big shells when they're not frozen. Okay, I see something over there and I am going to head over. I think it's a moon snail and I think it's a really good size one. So let's go check it out. It's another really good size storm shell. Ugh. That is massive. I'm loving every minute of this, even though I'm freezing. There's a cute slipper shell. Cute slipper shell. Oh my God, look at how big this one is. There's another huge one over here. Oh, look at that. That is enormous. I'm loving this. Oh my god, there's a blue one over here. I am hoping so bad that I can get this one. Some movement it is wiggling oh wow look at this you guys this was worth coming out here alone look at the color on the shell and I really feel like the color on this one is gonna stay 
because it's from really deep water. So really quick, I can explain before my mouth freezes, is that when shells come from really deep water, they are this blue color. And that's why like a lot of shells that are collected in New York and New Jersey, where they do a lot of dredging, are this color, is in really deep water. They don't do a lot of dredging off the coast of Plum Island here. So when I find one of these, I get super stoked. So this was definitely worth coming out here this morning. And I am very happy with this find. So I will, so I will clean this up later and I will show you guys what it looks like. But great score and I'm so super happy that it wasn't frozen solid to the ground like some of the other ones. Okay, you guys, it is cold out here. So what I can actually feel that you can't is my mouth actually starts to freeze after a while, so it makes it very difficult to enunciate words. So um, if I stumble on my words or if I say something and you have no idea what I said, put it in the comments. I'll let you know what I actually mean another dark moon snail storm shell can't get it oh. love storm shells you never find shells like this unless it's after a storm at least here on Plum Island it's very rare so storm shells are my favorite very cool. Here is another really great storm shell. It's a blue Stimsonis walk. And I'm hoping it breaks free. Yes! That is what I like. Look at the blue in the shell. Has a little bit of a break here, but not too bad. Great for the collection storm shells it is like the arctic out here today i really hope you are home by a warm fire enjoying a nice mug of coffee or cocoa because it is frigid out here guys this whole area is littered with these huge moon snails these i can't get off the ground i can't take my gloves off anymore because it's way too cold Ooh, we have a good moon this is why this is what I was coming for so we got a good moon snail score right here it is really beautiful if it's not frozen which it is guys all the shells are frozen to the ground and there's nothing we can do about it oh, it's such a bummer frozen solid. I can't even kick it loose. You guys, a lot of things are covered with snow. So I feel like we're missing out on a lot that's underneath the snow. Like, look at that. Everything is getting buried. Ooh, on the way, there's a nice stem sodi whelk here. Oh, that is really frozen. I can't get this one out. This is super frozen in here. I think we might need to leave this one. There's no way I could get this rock off the ground, but I'll give you a good look of it in there. So that is the issue with New England shelling. When the shells freeze, sometimes you just gotta let them go. So many moon snails today. Okay, it is getting ridiculously cold, but there is so much stuff out here today. Oh wow, look at that right over there. Look at the size of that moon snail. Let's go get it. Okay, so here's another huge one. This is big but I think it's going to be frozen. 
This is totally bumping me out. Oh, score! This one came loose, but it's very heavy. It's like full of ice and snow. But this is a very nice score and it's freezing. It's like holding an ice cube in my hand. So I'm gonna hurry up and put that in my bag. But look at the size of this one. This is what we were coming out here for. I was looking for huge moon snails like this get, that get kicked up in storms. So, so this is a score. I gotta hurry up and put this down. It's freezing. So I am heading back to my car. My hands are frozen. I am a popsicle stick, but tomorrow it's gonna to be about 10 degrees warmer. So um, I'm gonna head back here. Those blue storm shells have me very intrigued. Um, we're gonna come back tomorrow and see if we can find some more of those. So we're back, we're back at it. It's tomorrow. It is a very different day today than it was yesterday. Oh my goodness, it's blue skies, the sun is out. It's 32 degrees, it's almost like summer. So let's hit the beach and see if we can find those leftover storm shells. Walking down here and it looks like there's a really good sized fossilized piece of bone. So I'm always shocked at what gets kicked up during storms, but um, this is a really good bone specimen from, it looks like it could be like some kind of a socket from a ball and socket. Um, it was laying right here next to a sand dollar, which we'll reference in just a moment, but um, there's so many things washing up that I'm trying to cover everything. But that's what's so great about a storm, right? It pulls up everything that we're not used to seeing, but this is a very nice piece of bone. You can tell that it's bone from all of the porous markings on it. And when you pick it up, it's actually very light. It's not heavy like a rock would be. But um, there are legal um, rules and restrictions for beaches. I'm not sure about the refuge. I will look into that, but we're gonna be leaving this here today anyway. But um, there are some rules and restrictions for beaches across the country about removing bones and fossilized pieces of bone. So you wanna research that and check into it before taking anything from any trips or beaches that you visit. But we're gonna leave this here today, but it's a very nice find. And uh, right down here next to it was a very cool sand dollar. Um, it still has the cilia on it, which are, which is all that little fur that you can see there. It helps it move across the ocean floor and uh, move food into its mouth. I've showed that on earlier videos, but this one is completely dried out. So it looks like it was recently expired. Um, but we're gonna leave this here today as well, just in case but you can tell from how light it is and how dry it is that it definitely expired. Anytime you pick sand dollars up, if they're purplish red and they're covered with this cilia, um, it is a good indicator that they are still alive. So you do wanna place those back in the ocean. But we're gonna leave this one here as well. So two really good post-storm scores. And a little pocket of some dark moon snails here. Looking for the big ones. Got some traps that washed up here with them. This would have been a nice, whoop. This would have been a nice dark blue one. Had we found it, had we found it whole, that would have been a nice dark blue one. Very interesting color. Look at all these moons coming up. So yeah, this is exactly what the storms do. They wash up all these very large moon shells. All very good sizes with very good coloring, especially like these two. 
these two right here. Very nice coloring, unusual coloring. It's another one of these dark blackish blue storm finds. Um, blackish blue storm finds. It's really weathered and rustic. It's very cool. A friend of mine actually says that she loves all the layers on the oysters because she can actually see its history. And I really like the way she put that because it's true. I find them fascinating all the time. But until she actually put it that way, I wasn't sure why. But it's definitely the layers, all that history and the layers. I mean, look at that. That is amazing. Another good storm find. So guys, we're out here hunting around and there is something big up on the beach up ahead. And um, I will show you in just a second, but it does look like from a distance, it looks like a log or a piece of driftwood. A lot of times during the storms, big, huge trees actually roll up on the beach and it does look like that from a distance. But um, let me show you, it kind of looks fuzzy at the same time. So I'm wondering if it's a seal. There are some coyote tracks around it and there are some um, bird tracks around it. I don't know. It definitely doesn't look alive. So um, I'm going to call the rangers and see if they can send someone down to check it out. I don't see any orange spray paint on it. So I think it's probably not been reported. Um, I don't like coming across things like this on the beach, but um, it is part of nature and what does happen, but this is a good learning opportunity um, for when things like this do happen to definitely call it into the marine life. I put the description in the link below, but um, I will follow up with you and I will let you know what we find out. Horse muscle here. The barnacles covering it. Lots of nice, nice coloring. Really thick shell. Get a good up close shot for you so you can see all the detail on that. I really like the periostracum. That's that black covering that is on horse muscles, muscles some moon snails, um, whelks. It's like a thin skin coating. And um, as it's been in the sun for a while, it actually starts to get really brittle and come off. And then you can see the shell underneath. It actually adds a layer of protection for the mollusk. So you can see it here kind of chipping off. So right there is a good piece of it. So that is the periostracum. That is that skin coating, that extra layer of protection for the mollusk. And then underneath that is the actual shell. And this one's got a really thick layer on it. It's really beautiful. There's the hinge in the back holding the two shells together right here. And all the grow lines and the origin of growth right there in the back where it started out as a little baby and grew into the horse muscle it is today. So that is a good, beautiful find. Okay, so we just did some beautiful sunny shelling, post-storm shelling. Um, we found a lot of really cool things. We found more yesterday than we actually did today, which makes sense because we're a little bit further away from the actual storm. So. A few people have asked me, how do you know when to find the shells? And the answer to that is very tricky. A lot of it has to do with luck. Um, there are things that you can watch, like the surf forecast. Um, so for Palm Island, the best time to go shelling is when the forecast and the, the surf and the winds 
are coming from north northeast so that's a really good time to go shelling after we had a storm that rolled in from that direction the next thing is it can sometimes be the next low tide after the storm or it can take anywhere from one to five days for those shells to roll up onto the beach and then at that low tide it has to fall within daylight so that you can actually come out here and get those shells so there is a very short window of possibility to hit and I don't know if you saw the epic storm video that I did with Kim when we found all that loot. We hit the jackpot that day. So that storm checked off all the boxes for us. Okay, everyone. So I made it back to my car. I took off a couple layers. I took off my hat. It is very hot out there today. And I know that sounds crazy because it's 32 degrees. But when you're in the sun and you're all bundled up with a hat and with your sweatshirts and with your thermals and all of those things walking in the sand, it gets pretty hot. But um, those past two days of shelling did not disappoint. Post-storm shelling is my favorite, like absolute favorite thing to do. So we found some really cool things. We found those blue deep water shells. We found um, some scallop shells. We found bone fossils, um, a lot of really interesting things. So um, it was really great shelling with you guys and checking out all those post-storm shell finds. And um, until the next storm, I will see you guys next time we hit the beach. Bye.